Welcome back to the Leeds United career mode. We have our European group decided for us today as well as cracking on with big games in the Premier League. Europa Conference League campaign underway. It is, quite frankly, a winnable group. Bishakshi here, Portiminense and Cluj of Romania. We should top that. We might not be playing many games in the group stage. We might concentrate on league football and sim those ones because, let's be honest, we should be winning all of those games. Thank you to you guys in the comment section for your continued support. it has been Mark Fraser today, Sensei Stu today, and Bob as well. Uh, thank you for uh, your continued support in all of the content, be that here on the main YouTube channel or live on the Chesnoy Live YouTube channel or on the Twitch channel, Chesnoy Gaming. But for now, we're going to concentrate on the currently league football ahead of us. Fulham, Leicester and Villa with Bishakshi here at home to come. We are at home in three of the four games today. Leicester away will be the next one. And then we've got a, a busy-ish month of... Uh, of October, but like I say, we'll probably be simming these European group stage games. Jesus Christ, I was just in the fixture list there for uh, for November. Manchester City, Chelsea, Manchester United, and Spurs. Bugger, that's a month and a half, isn't it? Christ alive! What a horrid run of fixtures. Right, things should hopefully be a little bit more straightforward against Fulham. Fingers crossed, that is the case. Do drop the video like if you're enjoying the save. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any more content. And hopefully things will go as planned. In fact, you might as well stay with me whilst I show you Fulham's starting lineup. They've got one point from the opening uh, three Premier League games. They also lost in the Carabao Cup, hence the extra L in there. Wilhelmsen up top, Luke Harris at Cam. They've got Overeed on the right. Danilo Pereira at centre-back, not CDM, because Hinshelwood, formerly of Brighton, is in at CDM alongside Joao Polinia. And he's not a strong side. And absolutely, you understand why they are, where they are in the league. Joao Polinia into Jack Hinshelwood at the beginning of the game here. We've rotated quite a bit for this fixture because of the lack of quality in their lineup and their poor form. We anticipate being able to get a decent result and also offer some extra first team football to a number of players that haven't played much so far this season or even at all in Adam Hozek's scenario. We've tried to give Adam Hozek some first team football and every time I've tried to substitute him onto the field of play, the ball just hasn't gone out and the final whistle has ended up going. First chance goes Fulham's way here, but comfortable enough for Melier. Like I say, a number of players Starting this one that don't ordinarily. Chaibi gets his first full start as well. He had made his debut previously with a substitute appearance. Pascal Strauch trying to deal with Aguirre. Bobby Deckard over here scored a banger for Fulham at the weekend in real life, but he's not scoring here. That's a nice ball over the top to Wilhelmsen, who's brought it down really well and shrugged off Pascal Strauch. Just too many defenders around, though. Can't deny them the corner, however. And Fulham actually, so far, in the better side. Or at least the more creative side, if not the better side. A rare mistake from Melier. Came for the corner, got nowhere near it. And Danilo Pereira, the man that plays his trade normally at CDM, but is playing today at centre-back, has scored a striker-level quality header. But what Melier is doing, I've no idea. Proper no-man's land, that. They've got Overeed with the ball in. Project does some defensive work. Alex Scott just gets to that first. Nicola Pepe will look for Martin down the line. It's a hell of a ball from Nicola Pepe. I just need to find the right cross now. Of which that isn't. But here's Rute. And there's the equaliser. Martin does have his assist. Leeds do have the goal. The cross could have been better. But that finish from Genie was just what we needed. And we're level already. Nice ball into him by Martson on his weak foot, which I think is five star now, to be fair. Buried well. I was going to say, stick a toe in, Genie, and you're away, lad. Danilo Pereira's not going to have the legs to keep up. Genie Rute. Not at the double. He can finish the other one on his weak foot, but that on his favoured side, he can't bury. Riddle me that. Strauk over the bar. Great. Big switch. Just knock this back. And then try and go again. And that's worked very well. And Chaibi's in here. 
Chaibi. He's not rapid. Oh, the cheeky finish. You love it. I didn't ask for a dink. I just tried to finesse it. Faris Chaibi scores his first goal for Leeds United. The comeback's complete here against Fulham. And we in front at Ellen Road. You see, he's clearly made an impact with the squad because everybody's come to celebrate with him there. Half probably the scenario of the game. Half the fact that everybody loves him already. He's clearly got an impact in the dressing room, a character that everyone has warmed to immediately since his arrival. And that finish is naughty over the top of the goalkeeper. You love to see that. Fulham's goal went down as a Martson own goal as well, by the way. Not Danilo Pereira scoring a header. Which is utter nonsense because Danilo Pereira's header was very much on target. Martson just touched it on the line as it went over the line. So for that to go down as a Martson own goal I think is particularly harsh and unfortunate. But there was nothing harsh and unfortunate about the goal from Chaibi. Fulham were at the time deservedly ahead and now are deservedly behind. Free kick for Fulham. Bobby Deckard over Reed and Jack Hinchelwood lining up together here. Deckard over Reed takes it and that is comfortable to say the least for Melier. It's the first time he's made a mistake that I can recall at all, Melier, since we started the save in the championship. So not going to do too much in terms of punishment. Flozek on debut, grabs a goal. I think we might have two strikers at the club now that both are very much going to fire us to the next level. Deckard over Reed. Out to Aguirre. Driven. And one back. Ruter is about to come off. Look at the run. I just saw it. Nicola Pepe. Oh, the first touch is terrible. His second and third touches weren't much better either. Oh, the first touch from Gini Ruter was sensational though, but he can't add a fourth goal. That would have been wonderful. If Pepe's touch was better, he could have had a goal for himself and it would have been a pretty simple fourth for us. Fulham... Oh... Took the lead well, but haven't been able to build on it, unfortunately for them. Nicola Pepe here going on a great run. We'll look for Klojic at the back post, who has another two on Leeds United debut and four for us today. We will have another goal. Gire given away. Fulham's just not good enough, ultimately. That's the long and short of it. They just haven't been good enough. It's a lovely ball through to Alex Scott. I don't know if he's right or left-footed, but surely I've got to try and square it to Klojic for a hat-trick. I couldn't quite get it done for him. If we weren't three goals to the good, then I would have shot with Alex Scott there, but Klozek's made an impact in this game and deserved the opportunity to try and get the hat-trick. As it happens, we very nearly conceded at the other end, but no, a 4-1 opening win to start the episode is exactly how Tuesday was dreamt about beginning. I think it was... Leicester next, then the European game. Leicester came up with us, if you remember, from the Championship in Season 1. They also had a decent first season back at Premier League level. Not quite as good as ours, but still very well uh, competitive in that first season at Premier League level. They've gone a step on, as we have. We're third in the league, they're fifth in the league here. And having another strong start to a Premier League season, burnt Leno in goal for them. Rico Suta, Chaloba and Jacob. Then Patreon player Adam Starr at CDM. Started his career at Leicester. Now worked his way into the starting lineup. Mavadidi, Surafetsa and Koita still the front three for them. Keenan Dewsbury Hall has the captain's armband for today. There's the runner Martson. Oh, and across quickly the defender, but not actually accurately enough to win the ball. I'll help this on. And Archie Gray from range does have a decent effort. And Burnt Leno drawn into the save. We played Fulham in game one. Burnt Leno, a Fulham player in real life, now here at Leicester. Can Peru win that header? No. Gray will get to it first. Tried to get it to a teammate in a danger area and couldn't do so. But as you might expect, he's United on the front foot in the opening stages. Considering our start to the season and the quality in our team. Their team's not bad. But certainly ours is better. Dewsbury Hall. That's a sharp turn there as well. Okay, Leicester starting to show a little bit of quality here. And to prove why they are where they are in the league. Wow. Effort from Coita slammed off the post. 
Yikes. That was scary. Peru. To Marks and Peru again. It's the obvious ball. Has he got the legs to stay away from Harry Suter? Probably. Has he got the left foot? Definitely. But Leno has the quality in his hands to make the save as well. Ball down the line is there. Clark. And Peru through that gap is Genie. And never are you going to go for me, Jack? He is. Around the outside of Suter. Options here on the edge of the box. One of which is Archie Gray. Crescencio Somerville looking for a fantastic finish. Doesn't really get it. Just trying to get that into the corner, Bert Leno. Wow. Oh, he's given the foul. If I'd have blocked that and it had gone straight in, I'd have been delighted. Out here to Martson, who will deliver a ball at his hand. We'll take the advantage, will we? Or the corner. It will be the free kick that we'll have. I could be naughty and go for goal with someone. I'll put Somerville on it, actually. We'll try and chip it into the middle, where, fingers crossed, there'll be a teammate on the end of it. Oh, is there ever Archie Gray off the bar? Unbelievable. Oh, I should have waited for Van Evert rather than trying to immediately turn. Archie Gray comes the closest of anyone to scoring a goal so far at the King Power today. Somerville and Peru. The angle's against him, but... Jack Clark will score on the follow-up from the rebounded effort. The angle for Peru was tight. It was tighter still for Jack Clark once the save had been made, but we still tucked it home. Navadidi. Oh. Stop the ball coming through the middle, but he saw the ball round the outside. And Dewsbury Hall is, well, I think onside there, actually. Leicester with the chance that they've been waiting for, but they couldn't take it. Jack Clark leaves the defender for dead. And here's Milan Van Evert. Could they go from maybe equalising to actually falling behind now? Ferris Shavey finds Peru. Really strong effort again. Bernd Leno stops Peru from grabbing the goal. We've seen that before so far today. Pen for me. Advantage played Leicester's way, but advantage apparently used by clearing it like that. Martson, not going to score with him or anyone I can get it to from that position. Chaibi out wide here to Van Evoit. Peru still the man in the middle. Still it won't quite reach him. Archie Gray gets that down. The ref, I think, has given them a free kick. Yeah, OK. Final whistle sounds. Only the one goal, but one goal is good enough on this occasion. Fulham found a way through. Leicester crucially didn't. And Melier has another clean sheet to add to the two he already has this season in the Premier League. Spurs win 2 0 against Sheffield United. Liverpool win the Merseyside derby. We are going to stay in the top three, I think, at this stage. Every player did his job, certainly. We could have scored more, but we were better prepared and you, were sir. ultimately the better team in the end. Bishaksha here to come in the Europa Conference League next, but that will definitely be simulated. And in the Premier League, we are up to second. Man United are still undefeated, but we are yet to play anyone of any real quality this season, aren't we? Leicester, Fulham, Palace, Everton and Wolves. You would imagine, with that run of fixtures, that we would be where we are. It's when we get Arsenal, Brentford, Man City, Chelsea, Man United and Tottenham. That's when it's going to see us drop back down the standings, isn't it? Any notable players in Bishakshi here's starting lineup? Yes. Piontek up top at striker. Whiteman in at CDM. Tegia at centre back is a player whose name rings a bell but his face doesn't for some reason. Uh, nobody on the bench that I'm familiar with. Torres in goal for them. Is a regen of some description, but who of? We've absolutely no idea. We're expecting to win this Conference League group and hopefully win it rather convincingly as well. Three 84 rated players now. Four 84 rated players now with Melier having grown as well. Coming up close to Ben White. Now we really are starting to look like a fantastic squad, aren't we? Gail Hart, nice footwork. Archie Gray getting forward. Out to Chaibi. Bamford in the middle. And Chaibi again. Nicely done by Patrick Bamford. Cody Drama. Could cross. Chaibi 
Drama again. Bamford's there. Cody Drama might go all the way himself. Joe Gilhart. 1-0 leads. Great finish. Man that is now really third in the pecking order in that cam roll. Still able to do something. Grabs a goal. Bamford, Chaibi. Runners. Cody Drama on the way down the left-hand side. We haven't yet had any Carabao Cup football drawn this early stage of the season, which we certainly anticipate happening at some point. Alex Scott scores his first goal for the club. Keeper should have done better. Keeper didn't do well enough. Alex Scott on the score sheet. So opening goals for their Leeds United accounts today for Taibi and for Hlozek and now for Alex Scott too. Clark, Scott. Oh, footwork. That's a very good goal with three goals to the good in the 36th minute against the side that were probably the best of the other three in the group. Justifying the decision to simulate these ones and concentrate on league football, I think. The harmony within the squad is so good. The amount of times we see in the highlights, in the goal celebrations, that every outfield player rushes across to the goal scorer to celebrate with them. We have such a tight-knit group here at Leeds United. Patrick Bamford scores in Europe for Leeds. Chaibi, little flick. Nicely done. Drama could get it back to him. Good challenge by Leonardo. Drama's hurt by that. Felt like it was a perfectly legitimate challenge, really. Chaibi finds Joe Gelhart. Support here from Alex Scott. There's a lot of defenders in the way, but that might not stop Jack Clark spinning and scoring, which is exactly what he does. He's flying this year, Jack Clark. Leads four. Brighton man there. Lovely turn by Piontek. Consolation goal maybe for Bishak Shahir at the end of this game. Potentially, Piontek still trying to force it. But they can find a way through. Can't find a way through. They're certainly not going to get anything here at the moment, are they? Ref, you could just blow your whistle if you like. We don't have to actually let them have the shot. Thank you. Whoa! Leeds fans explode with delight in the early kickoff here in the Europa Conference League. A 4-0, very comfortable win in our first game in European football. And absolutely, we expect that to continue throughout the rest of the group stage. Kluge win against Porto Menense, so it's ourselves and the Romanians Sorry, that are at the top of the table. The but you can grab a moment of my time, but I'm just going to fly through this because we've a game against Aston Villa on the horizon back no. in the Premier League. Cody Drama did pick up a knock in that last game, and it's a knock that's going to see him miss three months for us with a broken toe. So he's out for a considerable period of time now. That will probably take us close to the January transfer, and I should be back by mid-December. The next game is against Aston Villa. We're currently fourth in the table. Again, we've had a pretty straightforward start to the season with regards to the nature of our opposition, so it is an... Uh, not realistic or not expected to finish league position at the moment. Although we do have ambitions of finishing in the top four, so perhaps it's not too far out the realms of possibility that we could finish where we are right now. Villa in 15th in the table so far, heavily underperforming, but with players like Pau Torres, Kingsley Coman and Moussa Diaby only on the bench, you might understand why they are down in the uh, lower mid table. Emmy Martinez still in goal. Esri Konza, Molly Watkins, some very familiar Aston Villa names in there and some very unfamiliar Aston, Aston Villa names in there as well. We're at home again, playing a lot of games at uh, Elland Road at the moment. And quite happy with that starting 11. Here we go. Rutez up to 85. Hello, sir. Douglas Louise. Oh, he's just run straight into Archie Gray there. It's really not very good from Douglas Louise. Somerville. It's building nicely. Just timed that well enough as the defender pushed on. Peru's in the box. Here's Ruter. Didn't leave him actually as, as much, with as much space as I thought it would. And Emi Martinez makes the good save. We'll try from the set piece, but I have a funny feeling it's going to be something special needed to beat Emi Martinez today. Archie Gray into Jack Clark, trying to get it in round the corner, but nobody was on the same wavelength as me or Jack Clark there. And Aston Villa will come away with it. Ben White with a lovely interception, and we might, still maybe, score the goal here. Genie! No! Again, good interception by an Aston Villa man. 
And Padu. Forward to Ruta. Space for Van Evijk. Needs to find the right pass at the right time. That might be it. Joel Peru. You trust his left foot in almost every single scenario. We're very fortunate to have two strikers as deadly as Peru and Adam Hojek are at the club right now. Bamford played in Europe and bagged a goal as well. So still we have three options in that forward area. Although certainly Patrick Bamford will probably only be applicable for certain calibre games. But Joel Peru will do the job in any game it seems. Rafa's beaten the man. Rafa's in the box. Good save. Melier at the near post. Unai Emery trying to force his team forward here. Decent delivery. It will fall for someone, will it? Yeah, that someone is Peru. Oh, Matty Cash has won that back, though. And Ambadou misses the challenge. Ollie Watkins in the box. He's deadly in real life. He's potentially going to get another opportunity in virtual life. But the answer eventually, thankfully, is no. Villa will not have another chance. Somehow that's fallen kindly for Jack Clark. Oh, Rafa with a change of pace. Get past Ian Martin, who has recovered. Rafa with a delivery. Alvaro with the header of his career. Bullet header from Alvaro up top for Aston Villa. And at the very beginning of the second half, they have managed to get themselves level. It's a great ball in. But this header, by the way, you don't stop headers like that. That's unbelievable. I don't even know who Alvaro is off the top of my head. But that is a hell of a finish. Alvaro Daniel Rodriguez Munoz is 72 rated. That header went at 72 miles an hour. Intercepted by Jack Clark. Peru needs it. Peru got it. Driven. And a little flick around the corner. And Rutez in here. Just as they pull themselves level. We do not take the lead again. That's the sort of finish we keep seeing Genie miss. He's going to need higher finishing stats. He's going to really crack on at the top end. He's 85 rated. He's the joint highest rated player at the club. But he just doesn't quite do it on occasion. Which is why we contemplated selling him. But you guys were determined that Genie Ruter was to stay. And stay he has done, but... Let me down on occasion, still he does, despite being 85 rated. Hopefully we will be able to get the goal to lead, but we might not get a better chance. It might have to come from something a little bit more difficult to create. Go on, through through that gap. Now he's done it too! I even I slowed right down, even put a half cocky look on my face like a he can do it. He didn't do it. Oh, it's really, really bad from Aston Villa. Peru's looking to get on the end of this. This concert doesn't do well enough. And Joel Peru! Wow! I wasn't sure whether it was going to drop for him with the other defender closing down, but that is a goal of the highest order from our Dutchman up top. Contra just doesn't do well enough with this, and, well, you won't see a better goal all day. That is unbelievable. Did it take a deflection? It didn't. It was just that good. Wow. If you haven't dropped the video a like already, that deserves one, please. Lovely ball. Morgan Rogers in behind. And Rafa wins the header. And we get away with Somerville. Plojek is off the bench here for what was an underperforming. Genie Ruter so far in this game. Through that gap for Somerville. This will be game, surely. Somerville! It's a great save by the keeper. Really top stop by Emmy Martinez. Who is obviously one of the best goalkeepers in the Premier League. And proving it once more. Should have been 3-1. It won't be. We might pay for that. Look for support. It is arriving. And Padu's there. Quickly through that gap is Adam Plozic. I like Plozic's footwork. It's really good. And Padu. Clark's the obvious. Drive around the outside. Peru's calling for it. Peru will have it. And Joel Peru again. With his head this time. We bought in Adam Plozic. But Joel Peru does not want to give up that starting spot, does he? 
Melier doing his best Joe Hart impression. This leads three, Aston Villa one. To be fair, that header's worth watching again for you, isn't it? Lovely cross in. And, well, that's as good a header as the other one was overhead kick. Kamara. Little dink. Oh, lovely flick. And Ollie Watkins. It's just as well we got that third. That's an excellent goal from Aston Villa. It's too little, too late, as the saying goes, with just 10 seconds or so remaining in the game. But, brilliant goal. Take nothing away from that. That's quality from Villa. They have been very good today. They just haven't quite been good enough to see off this Leeds United side who forced their way to a 3-1 lead with a Joel Peru hat-trick. A very well-earned match ball for the man up top. Absolutely stellar effort from him. That will keep us in the top four and will keep us pushing for a Champions League spot this season. The fixtures will get more difficult. Aston Villa was noticeably a step up. Ah, Tottenham in the Carabao Cup is not necessarily the calibre of fixer I was hoping for in the first round of that competition that we were involved in. We are a point off top at this stage, but certainly out of position comparatively to a number of the sides around us. Although I say that, but in true FIFA style, that side is of the quality to challenge for a top four spot, isn't it? 285s, 384s. 283s that's a top four team but will it be come the end of the season i hope so i really do busy ish month next time around tottenham in the cup is i don't know whether i'll sim that one or not the Carabao cup we don't really care for i think i'll play the league games and sim the cup games in that next episode it's probably the way forward i think Sheffield United, Arsenal and Brentford don't really care for the Carabao Cup. Although I could play Spurs and Sim Sheffield United because we probably stand a chance of winning the Simmer against Sheffield United. We'll wait and see. That was a hell of a goal though. The header was just as good as was the points tally and the league position right now. Very happy with this start to season three at Leeds United. Hopefully you guys are as well. And hopefully you guys will join me tomorrow for more too. I'll see you then.